This is a short video covering how best to model CO2 buried pipeline ruptures in FAST and Safeti 8.71. We've been looking at CO2 buried pipeline ruptures in some detail over the past few months, and this video is intended to provide some guidance on how best to set up such cases in the latest version of FAST and Safeti. We're going to look at a case study from the kosher JIP, which took place six or seven years ago, and look at the FAST predictions against one of the rupture experiments. We're going to look at steps we can take to improve validation against that experiment using the current version of FAST. And we'll also present some longer term model improvements, which we hope will be in the next release of FAST and Safeti. So this is the case we're going to look at from the kosher JIP. The reference for this is on the left hand side of the screen there. It's a 170 second steady release rate of dense phase CO2, which resulted in a 3.3 meter full bore fracture, which you can see in the center of the screen. On the right hand side, you can see the development of the visible cloud at three separate times at 10, 30 and 120 seconds after the rupture. As you can see from the bottom image, a grounded cloud is formed around the crater with significant ground level concentrations. We've set this case up uh, using the buried pipeline model. And what you see on the left there is a side view after 120 seconds. And we've compared that with the experiment after 120 seconds. As you can see, the fast prediction is quite different. It's initially elevated, it goes quite high and doesn't touch down until it's a good distance downwind, whereas the experiment is grounded almost instantly and spreads in all directions. So what's the problem that causes FAST not to give us a good representation of the experiment in this case? Well, it's worth outlining what's going on in the buried pipeline model here. We have a full bore fracture of a certain length which exposes the two open ends of the pipe. Flow comes out of each of those ends, they interact with each other, they interact with the crater and ultimately we have a flow out of the crater. Now that's quite a complex interaction so we essentially model this as a large pseudo source. We apply published correlations for the fraction of initial mass and momentum present in the flow leaving the crater which allows us to calculate a source term, uh, which we then pass to the UDM. Now, having looked at this in some detail, we believe that the implementation of this in FAST results in exit velocities that are too high, and that causes the jet-like plumes which we see coming out the crater. Essentially, we think our calculated source term represents a flow covering only a fraction of the crater area. And so it's not representative of the flow we tend to see emerging from the crater in these type of experiments. So what's the proposed solution for the current version of FAST and Safeti? Well, we're currently reviewing our approach to these buried pipeline releases, which I'll touch on a little bit later on. In the meantime, for FAST and Safeti 871, we advise that um, you run the buried pipeline scenarios as usual. You then create a user defined source from that buried pipeline scenario. And then you divide the velocity by three within the UDS. And I'll show you an example of that just now. So this is a fast model of the case we've been looking at. So let's go ahead and run the uh, buried pipeline scenario here. And if we have a look at the graphs, that should be uh, exactly the same as what we saw earlier. Um, so let's go ahead and create a user defined source from that. And from that source at 64 meters per second, let's divide that by three and change that to 21.5 and 21.5, oops. Okay, let's run that and we'll have a look at the 
graphs from that as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the original. We can see the 5% contour um, stops there at about just short of 80 meters in height. The 2.5% contour is nowhere near ground level. Um, and the 1% uh, contour is about 200 and 280 meters downwind. Now, in the user defined source, we see the 5% contour is now a significant contribution at ground level. That's 320 meters downwind. The 2.5% contour is down here nearly 450 and the 1% contour is down at nearly 550. So this is the effect of um, lowering that velocity. The overall height is reduced to about 40 meters in this case and we get significant contributions at ground level, certainly much more than we did in the, um, in the buried pipeline model. Let's have a look at the validation for this proposed improvement. Here we present concentration data from both rupture experiments which took place in the kosher JIP. On the left there's an observed versus predicted concentration chart with the observed concentration on the x-axis and the predicted concentration on the y-axis. The central of those three lines there represents the equality line where the prediction would exactly match the observed value and the lines above and below represent overprediction and underprediction by a factor of two. The blue series here is the original fast modeling of these cases. As you can see, the predicted concentrations are much lower than observed, particularly in the near field here with this cluster of points. Now this corresponds to where fast predicts the jet to be airborne. So there's very low concentrations close to the ground. When we applied the factor of three velocity reduction, the cloud returns to the ground much quicker and you see the concentrations in this near field are now much higher with that cluster of points now sitting within the factor of two bands. The same happens further afield, but to a slightly less significant extent with the ground level concentrations for the reduced velocity case now higher than for the original fast modeling and no longer under predicting. So just to preview a couple of things we're working on at the moment and hope to include in the next release of FAST and Safeti to improve the modeling in this area. The first is a simpler source term. Conceptually, this will be similar to the one we discussed earlier, but with the flow distributed over the full area of the crater. It uses a similar method to determine the level of air entrainment and an isenthalpic flash to determine the exit properties of the fluid at the crater boundary, such as the density and solid fraction. Then we use conservation of mass to determine the exit velocity. And as we're using a larger area here, this should be somewhat lower than what we're currently predicting. The second thing we're looking at is to introduce a gas blanket model for steeply descending plumes, such as the one we saw in the kosher experiment earlier. Here we're going to use an instantaneous cloud, which is being fed by the flow from the crater and is then free to spread in all directions. So this should allow us to better represent the near field behavior of some of these experiments, including potential spreading of the cloud upwind, which we currently don't predict. To summarize, we think the current fast modeling may underestimate ground level concentrations, particularly in the near field. We think this is due to the exit velocities being predicted from the crater being too high. We're working on a couple of improvements to these rupture cases, namely the source model and the near field dispersion model. And we expect these to be available in the next commercial release. In the meantime, we advise to use the current buried pipeline model, create a UDS from that model, and then divide the velocity by three.